Jackson Powers Johnson. Player profile today, I'm a retired Raiders linebacker here to break down why JPJ is probably the most exciting player on my radar right now and quickly becoming one of my favorite players in the league, let alone the Raiders. Um, first off, we just got to, yes, I am more excited about him right now than even Brock Bowers. The pickup of JPJ, I think, is more important than any of us realize at this moment. Some of you are probably catching on to it, but the dude is a dog. You cannot hide the dog. You cannot hide the passion for the game that this guy plays with. I mean, finishing his block, you know, I've seen him go and uh, help, help down on somebody else, stay on that. Another guy releases, boom, chip on that one. Ball carrier breaks and he's running across the field because he's trying to make a highlight. He's trying to make top 10 on Sports Center, and I freaking love it, dude. This guy is out for blood. He loves violence. He loves contact. And he's going to get after it all game long, freaking foaming at the mouth. I mean, Antonio Pierce has said it a couple times now, you know, that refs have come up to him saying, hey, he needs to cool it. He needs to cool it. He's, he's playing too physical. And you can tell it, it, Antonio Pierce cannot hide how excited he is by that. And I guarantee when that happens, the ref's coming over and he's saying, you know, saying that. And, they, you know, Antonio Pierce is like, oh, yeah, no, I, I'm going to talk to him. You know, trust me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him an earful. And then he's ref walks away and he's probably, oh, yeah, he's not going to talk to him. He's going to say, hey, they said this and we're going to talk about it, but keep that up. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's freaking awesome. And I love it. Um, and I'm just now putting this together. A couple of days ago, I kind of remembered a few years back and I tried to track down the post. I saw a post of this kid that was just this big buff kid and he was outside with an easy bar curl bar and he was looking left and looking at the camera and just basically spitting like it was a wrestling promo and I was like there's something special about this guy I haven't seen him play a snap of football but the charisma if that is as real as it looks there I mean this guy's gonna be great and I want to follow him but you know you're busy you can't follow every kid but I saw okay he, that guy's committed to Oregon and then it wasn't until I, you know, really dove into JPJ and saw, oh, he was the Remington winner. Oh, that's the best center in college football. I remember that kid was a center. And then I put it together. That kid is freaking JPJ. And he turned out to be as good as I hoped he would be from that. And the reason he's so important for our team, for the Raiders, he's a dog. He plays tough like Raider football should be played. And he brings that mindset. There's certain people when they not only play that way, but they go out there and they kind of, they talk it and they walk it and they have a big personality and that big personality can now influence other people. And that, cause we already got Max, he's a big influence on that entire team. But if you can get a few big personalities like that, that are really, um, persuasive, I, I'm, I'm lacking for the word right now, but they can have a big influence on people that, it takes a few of those to create a really strong culture in a locker room. And I really believe that JPJ can be one of those guys. You know, I don't want to overly gas him up right now, but I just see so much potential in him because he's got all the physical tools. You watch the tape, you turn it on, and you, you see the effort that he plays with. He never gives up on a play, which is ballsy, by the way. This guy's a ballsy dude through and through, but to play that way... Um, when you're 330 pounds or whatever he is, your gas tank, you don't have the same kind of lungs and capacity as somebody that's, you know, 200 pounds and flying around the field. So you're going to go and sprint 40 yards across the field just to try to help the running back that you may not even catch to go lay a lick on somebody knowing that you're going to have to get back up and be dog tired and keep going the next play. It just, it's another level of, of mental toughness and it's a it's a kind of effort and playing style you don't see often from linemen and um and I love it man you see this guy jumping across piles trying to just blast people and there's a couple different there's a probably several different types of crazy on the field it, types of scary I'd say so there's the really big talkers that can also back it up but they're really slick with their mouths too. And if you're not a great talker, you don't want to feed into that game, but then it kind of makes you look dumb because you're not saying anything back and they're kind of getting the better of you. That's scary, but what's a lot scarier <laughs> is the guy that's just nuts. You know, the guy that is gonna come after you 
and chase you across the field and boom, get up and smile on your face and just foaming at the mouth. And he's going to do it play after play because the talkers might come back at that, come back at that for a few plays, come back, you know, for a quarter or two and three, but he just keeps getting up. And it doesn't matter if you knocked him out, if you embarrassed him in front of everybody, if you laid a huge hit on him, if you're up by 40, he's going to keep getting back up and he's going to say, I'm going to get you on the next one. I'm going to get you on the next one. That kind of crazy will wear out even the biggest talkers. That kind of crazy will take people's will after a while. And, and it, again, it doesn't matter if you're beating him by 40. He's just trying to kill you. <laughs> and I see that being the potential of JPJ where you cannot influence him in a way to take, make him turn down. I hope that that stays true. That's the potential that I see in him. It's kind of like a reincarnation of Richie Incognito to certain degrees right after Richie Incognito retired. Okay, Richie Incognito was a scary dude. And in a lot of ways, he was a great player, super athletic for his size, hit hard, talked a lot, and just had a, a craziness about his, his eyes, you know, and he would, he would talk and he kind of had this higher pitched voice, but it was saying kind of nice things, but you knew that he would strangle you with a smile on his face. And, um, I just, I would see him talk, talk to people and just make them turn down, you know, and, and I see that JPJ kind of has that. And he's even got, you know, the shaved baby face too, which I would, you know, uh, argue that that's even scarier. You know, a guy with a beard is supposed to be kind of rough and edgy. You know what you're getting, but then you get this clean, bald-faced, kind of baby-faced guy, and he should be nice, but he's got murderous intentions. Um, that's a whole lot scarier for, for reasons words can't describe. Um, what else? Let's get into this game a little bit. I got a couple notes here I can refer to. Um, again, the tape does not lie. This uh, we've, we've seen it. I just covered it. You know, the... The intensity, the physicality he plays with, he's not just a guy trying to get his job done and then, you know, kind of loaf to the huddle in the next play. He's going and searching and headhunting. I almost forgot to mention that he is a very versatile lineman as well. He plays all three interior offensive lineman uh, positions, which is a big deal. Uh, he was the Remington Award winner in college football, best center in college football. Um, but for us, he's already played left guard and right guard, and he's done that in the same game where he switches around. And I was really impressed by an answer that he was asked after one of the games. One of the reporters said, you know, is it hard switching from one, one side to the other? And he very quickly and immediately and directly, and you could see it, he believes it was just adamant. No, it's, it's easy. It's the same thing. You just invert your feet. You know, it's all inverted. And I thought, oh, my gosh, that is – he's strong upstairs. Um, not only in the X's and O's that he can know all the plays – as a rookie, as you're learning a lot of this stuff on the fly, to be able to play both sides, because um, even if it is just inverted, there's you still have, I gotta think through that, okay, so that means I pull on this side if I'm on, okay. He's comfortable out there, and to already have that comfortability, you know, because a lot of guys will get heady. They'll be like, you know, even from a linebacker position, oh, I got to line up over the, in a 10, over the, you know, over the center. And that's so different than lining up over the guard or the tackle, what I'm used to in a 40. And, it, you know, some guys can get, just get tripped up by those things and they just get heady and they're, they're mentally lo overloaded easily. And he, again, rookie year, 21 years old, he's just, he's already comfortable with it. And I think that's a big part of certain guys being able to just, not be bothered by things where he's comfortable out there that allows him to be more of a dog. Um, there is a piece to the psychology and your gas tank a little bit. Um, you know, he knows it, the more comfortable you are, it's almost like you get, you don't get as gassed or tired. And he's, you see him running 40 yards across the field, trying to blast people and and he's able to keep going. It's you have this feeling of okay, I'm, I'm just line up and do it again. I'm a machine. I don't get tired. Uh, obviously, there is a physical a physical conditioning aspect to that. But the calmer you can be upstairs, the the uh, less the less you know just physically gassed that your body gets. You you got better endurance. Um, and watch for this. You'll see a, a lot of guys in the beginning of games are very amped. And sometimes they're a little too amped and you'll see guys that it's like one play in or two plays in and they're like huffing and like you look like, you know, it's just like, how are you tired? There's no, you can't be tired. You're not tired. You're, you've done one play. And 
that happens sometimes. You're just a little bit too amped mentally, psychologically, or maybe you're uncomfortable or you're nervous or whatever. Nerves can kill your lungs. And um, so it, it just speaks volumes to the fact that he's already there mentally. Like he's, he's grounded, he's not scatterbrained and just overloaded and it's not chaotic upstairs. So he's strong mentally in that he's a dog. He's strong mentally in that he's got the X's and O's and can play all three of those spots. I'm sure center is most comfortable for him, and he'll be making that move at some time in his Raiders career and be a longtime center for us. But um, exciting stuff, man. So this is another reason it's really impressive. Um, again, we've seen the passion. We've seen the energy. We've seen kind of that ballsiness of him to come out and immediately as a rookie. See, I, we haven't heard him mic'd up or you know come on any somebody else's mic. If you have, point me to the clip because I'd love to hear it. So I don't know if he's much of a talker, but the way he's playing is you know as a rookie and going and trying to clean people off on the on the pile and, and leave his feet and just do a play after that's ballsy. And what it does because especially as a rookie, so you're coming into the unknown. You know what's what's scary in life in general. It's like the the you know fear of loss, the fear of the unknown. Right, you're coming into an environment where you don't know what you don't know, you know, and so he's kind of backing himself by design into a corner that he's got to fight his his way out of, which I respect so much because you come in playing a big game and talking like everybody's gonna play their hardest, but to play like a dog and to basically put yourself in situations where people are gonna want to fight you every play, and these are. Again, the unknown. When I thought of the NFL when I was younger, it's like, these are a bunch of aliens. I don't know what I'm getting into. And he's coming in day one and just striking like that. It it forces you to go into a survival mode and pull even more out of you because now you know you have to be on guard at all times. You have to be that dog at all times because you committed to it. You know, there's no stepping in shallow. That's just who he is, and I love that. And... Um, yeah, that takes nuts. It's, it, it's scary, but it, jumping straight into the deep end like that. Um, let's also talk about the fact that he is 21 years old. 21 years young. He's got a lot of football in front of him. And again, he kind of looks like a baby face. Like he still probably has a lot of great physical and muscular development to come. I think he's going to get even like more bricked up throughout his career where he's start, you start to see a little bit of a, a body recomposition, where he's, you know, he's turning some of that fat into muscle, but staying in that 320, 330 pound range. I think he's got a lot of gains to be had still in the weight room. Um, and he, you know, he put up, I think 30 reps or so at 225. So he's no stranger to the weight room, but he's 21 years old. He still kind of looks like a puppy a little bit. There, there were gains that I made after 21. It probably wasn't until like 20, 26, 27 range where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm still, you know, hitting new levels of strength. I'm still, I look way different in the mirror. Um, this is functional, usable strength. Um, I think he's going to have a lot of that. Like we're not even, we're not even seeing uh, the closest, the, the close to the best version of JPJ at this point. Like there's a lot uh, of room for him to grow and he's starting off hot. So I'm just so excited, man, um, because a guy like this that can play this hard and is this kind of charismatic and this uh, in-your-face kind of personality, it's Raider-esque, it's Raider football, but it's, uh, it's infectious in a locker room. If you can get, you know, we, again, I said we got Max, we got JPJ now. If you can get a few guys like that, now that's the norm, and you better get on board or get the hell out. And a guy like that in a locker room is, is going to be a big deal. And for years to come, man, I hope he's a Raider for life because this dude – is the dude okay he's out to steal your lunch money he is the nfl's new biggest bully and he's only going to be getting meaner and meaner and leaner every year let's go jpj watch out everybody raider nation love you